Did you hear that? My heart just skipped a beat. Hi, I'm Keston. In this video, we'll be talking about the most revered, the most sacred comic book collections in all the hobby. They're called pedigrees. From 2019 to present, pedigree books are easy to spot on CGC graded books. They are adorned by the coveted gold label. Before 2019, they were merely a note on the blue label books. Some of the stories associated with these collections will astound you. Others will break your heart. Let's dive in. I'll cover the following. What counts as a pedigree collection? To address this question and others, I'm going to lean heavily on the CGC website. So to be a pedigree, four criteria must be met. First, the collection must come from an original owner. So this is a person who amassed the collection when the books first came out, typically getting those books off the newsstand. So it can't be somebody who got the books sort of secondhand. For example, there will never be a Keston collection, unfortunately. Second, the collection must be of vintage material. Books from the 70s through today are common, and they are relatively common in nice condition as well. Therefore, it's their earlier collections, those with the majority of their books from the 30s through the 60s that are eligible for pedigree status. Third, the pedigree collections are big. We're talking about over a thousand books. Fourth, the books must be in high grade. For example, Silver Age pedigrees, they average about a 9.4. That's a near mint copy. For Golden Age books, these look really nice as well, but the average grade can be lower just a little bit. That's because Golden Age books are so rare to find in really high grade. For some Golden Age books, the highest consensus might be a 7 or 8. When you put all these criteria together, you can see why pedigrees are so special and so rare. In fact, to date, there are only 61 pedigrees recognized by CGC. Second question, if you're looking at a raw book, how can you tell if it came from a pedigree collection? They're most readily identified by distinctive markings. CGC provides examples of such markings for various pedigrees. Cosmic Airplane books have these markings on interior pages. Aurora copies often have the distributor code markings written with a grease pencil. And the Edgar Church Mile High copies have writing that looks like this. Further, these books were stored for decades in a cedar closet. And to this day, many still have that woody bouquet. Ooh, smells so fresh. Then there's the light pedigree that has this distinctive marking. I'm just kidding, but if you do like this content, please consider hitting that like button. Speaking of the Edgar Church Mile High pedigree, let's dive into those stories. The Mile High collection is the most famous of them all. Let's examine this story from the perspective of the person who discovered the collection, and that's Chuck Rosansky. By the way, my telling of the story is an adaptation from what's on Chuck's website. I provide a link to the source material in the description box for the Mile High story and for the other stories as well. A family from Colorado was trying to get rid of their father's belongings, and he had this large comic book collection. The father's name was Edgar Church. They were thinking about just throwing it out, but they thought they might call a comic book dealer up first. Chuck took off in his beat-up van and traveled to the house. At first, he was shown a huge collection of comics in the basement. They were mostly westerns from the 1950s. It was an amazing assortment of books, but nothing particularly valuable. Almost as an afterthought, a family member mentioned that Edgar had stored additional comic books in the bedroom in a cedar closet. They insisted that these books be hauled away too. Chuck made his way up the steps, and the closet that he was brought to was typically locked. Few people had ever seen the interior. As Chuck began to take a sip of water, the door was open. Chuck noticed a newsstand fresh copy of Red Raven Comics No. 1 and lost coordination. The water completely missed his face and went down his shirt. Stacks and stacks of near-perfect Golden Age books were in that closet. Chuck eventually dried himself off and worked out a deal with a family for this find of a lifetime. When all was said and done, Chuck took about 20,000 comic books back to a store. To date, this is the largest Golden Age comic book collection ever discovered. In fact, it was nearly a census of all the comic books that came out between the late 1930s through the 1950s. It also included the majority of major keys, including Action Comics No. 1. Additionally, the books were stored in ideal conditions. The dry, cool, even temperature of that Colorado bedroom kept these books preserved amazingly well. Furthermore, the cedar in the cedar closet is a great repellent for paper-eating bugs and prevented ugly incidents like this. It is the pedigree to which all others are compared. The Okajima collection is a sad story, a sobering reminder of the life of many Japanese Americans during World War II. A young Japanese American girl from California was sent to an internment camp. 
At the time, many U.S. government officials were concerned about spies on the U.S. soil. And if you had Japanese heritage, even if you were an American citizen, there's a good chance you'd be put in one of these internment camps. From 1942 to 1945, the comic books that this young girl collected had markings from the internment camps. So really, many of the comic books that she collected this time depicted the Americans fighting the Japanese. It's hard for me to place myself in the girl's shoes, but I have to imagine this was incredibly confusing. After the internment camps, she continued collecting through the early 1950s. Today, the Okajima books are revered not only for their backstory, but also because of their freshness. Many of them have bone white pages, despite being 70 to 80 years old. The collection was brought to market in the mid 90s. The last story comes from the latest set of books to receive pedigree status, the Promise Collection. Like the Okajima pedigree, this story's backdrop is war, albeit a different one. A young man was preparing to fight in the Korean War. As a kid, he was an avid collector. He had just about every single comic book from the mid-1940s all the way to the early 50s. Before departing, he asked a family member to take care of his comic collection. And he said, if anything were to happen to me, promise that you'll take care of it. The collector went off to war, but wouldn't return. And his brother kept his promise. The story came to light in summer of 2021, and the collection is aptly named The Promise Collection. It boasts about 5,000 books, and their quality rivals that of the Mile High Collection. How does pedigree status affect price? This is a complicated question. Generally speaking, a pedigree book will sell for a premium. That is, if you take a pedigree book that's, say, a 9.2, and you look at another copy that's also a 9.2, that that pedigree book is going to sell for more. Nevertheless, how big that bump is varies from pedigree to pedigree. Some pedigrees sell for only slightly more than their non-pedigree counterparts. Other books sell for a hefty premium. For example, three collections that we've talked about so far, Mile High, Okajima, and Promise, all have 50% to 100% higher prices than their non-pedigree counterparts. That's for a couple of reasons. One, the stories are amazing. And number two, the page quality is really fresh. How and where do you obtain a pedigree book? For minor issues of particular series, they don't cost as much as you might think. You might be able to pick up a book for just a couple hundred bucks, for example. But if you're going after a major key that's pedigreed, be prepared to spend a lot of money. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of dollars in the case of something like an Action Comics number one or Detective Comics number 27. Three sites that I visit almost always have pedigree books. They are Heritage Auctions, Comic Connect, and Comic Link. For example, you go to Heritage and you can say Mile High Collection, or you might say The Promise Collection. In fact, Heritage Auctions had this exclusive deal with The Promise Collection. They've been selling that huge collection off in chunks every few weeks. So check them out. They still have a lot of that Promise Collection to sell. And now you can spot these books easily if you're just looking at images because they have that gold label. How about you? Do you own any pedigree books or do you have a favorite pedigree? Let me know in the comment box below. Thanks for hanging with me. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you around real soon.